I'll be perfectly honest, before this morning, I had never had the slightest inkling towards making this sort of TBR, but the mood struck me, and I'm all about mood reading right now, so why not mood TBRs as well? Hi everyone, Rosie here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm, a I'm maybe a bit late to be joining this trend, but you know what? Like I said in the intro, the mood struck me, so I'm gonna do it. I thought I might make a 23 books I want to read in 2023 video. This isn't really something I usually think about. I'm usually a monthly TBR person with maybe like a few books that I plan out for every month, but for the most part, I like going month by month. However, in the second half of 2022, I basically didn't follow TBRs at all. I mood read. I kind of read a few TBRs, but not very much. And I thought that's what I was going to do in 2023 as well. But it occurred to me that maybe what I would like is something that I'm working on over like the span of the year. So it doesn't have to be any specific book at any specific time. Sort of a little bit of a, oh, I could pick that up. Some ideas for when I'm not sure what I want to read. And it kind of helped that I already had nine books that, I don't know why I did that, that's five, not nine. I already had nine books that I definitely want to read in 2023, and that is the last nine books in my Discworld publication order reread. I have been working on this since literally before I started this channel. I think I started in maybe 2019, and I've been slowly making my way through. In 2022, I read 11 Discworld books. For those of you who are just joining us, Discworld is a fantasy, comedy, profound life series by Terry Pratchett, a British author. It contains, I've got it here, I think it's like 41 books. Yes, the full, there's 41 proper novels and they all take place on the Discworld, which is a round world that travels through space on the back of a turtle propped up by four elephants, but not all 41 books follow exactly the same characters. We have various subgroups following different characters and they pop up in each other's stories and it's sort of interconnected, but also you can pick up books throughout the series and jump in wherever. I have nine books left in the publication order reread and I really, really want to finish that in 2023. I have some sort of ideas for things I might want to do in the future with this girl because I don't think I'll ever be done rereading them. So what books do I have left? I still need to read A Hat Full of Sky, Thud, um, Going Postal comes between those two, but I read it in 2020 for a read-along. <laughs> Hi buddy, are you gonna help? Then there is Wintersmith, Making Money, Unseen Academicals, I Shall Wear Midnight, Snuff, Raising Steam, the Sh and finally The Shepherd's Crown. I'm sort of stuck on A Hat Full of Sky, which I love this book. I know I do, but it's also a book that I very much read as a teenager, an early teenager at that, and very much identified with some of the things that the protagonist Tiffany is going through in her journeys to become a witch and her learnings and her journey towards adulthood. I definitely identified a lot with some of these struggles that she faced. And I think I've just got a bit of a block of in my head when I read this book, I'm going to feel like that again, which I know probably won't be the case because I'm definitely no longer a 13 year old, but I need to just dive in. I'm going to do that pretty soon, I think, and hopefully then continue on with the series because I know there are some really great books. Some of my absolute favorites are still coming up in this stretch, or at least ones that I remember as my favorite from last time I read them and I'm so excited to keep going. Oh, you're such a good helper. Thank you, buddy. Then I also have a list of books that have been on my own TBR for a very long time. If you saw my recent, how did I do on my 2022 goals video or whatever that was called, it'll be linked up here. You'll know that I'm trying to reduce the TBR of books that I own. And something that I have realized is that there are a lot of books that have been on that TBR for a very long time, and I'm putting them off because I have some sort of feeling like I might not like them and I'm afraid to read them, which is stupid. Because if I don't like them, what do we do? DNF them. So I've made myself a little list of 12 books that in 2023 I want to either read or reject. And I want to go into these with the explicit thought that if I am not enjoying this reading experience, I'm going to stop. If it's fun, yay, I finally got a book off my TBR and I'm enjoying it. 
If it's not fun, I will just stop reading it. I'm not going to give like a detailed introduction to all of these because honestly they've been on my TBR for so long that I don't really remember what a lot of them are in a lot of detail, but I'll tell you their titles and authors and sort of like what genres they fall into. So we have Economic Gangsters, Corruption, Violence, and the Poverty of Nations by Ray Fisman and Edward Miguel. This is a non-fiction business econ politics sort of book. Then we have Company Town by Madeline Ashby. This is a science fiction and mystery novel that does sound really fun. I might start with this one pretty soon because I read the description this morning and it sounds really good. <laughs> then Harem, The World Behind the Veil by Alev Leitel Croutier. This is a nonfiction history book. The Oracle Year by Charles Sewell. This is a thriller and I think it has a sci-fi element. It doesn't say sci-fi in the genre tags on the story graph, but if I'm remembering correctly, there is some sort of sci-fi element in this. And again, one that does sound very exciting, I've just never gotten around to picking up. Then Scam Me If You Can, Simple Strategies to Outsmart Today's Ripoff Artists by Frank W. Abagnale. If you've seen the movie Catch Me If You Can, it's by the guy that that movie is based on a true story on. He went on to become like a fraud detection and like anti-fraud person in his adulthood and he's now written this book. It's like a non-fiction psychology, technology, true crime like book. It's either going to be really interesting and really helpful or really really gimmicky, which is why it's on this list. <laughs> then The Girl with Seven Names, Escape from North Korea by Hyoseon Lee and I think probably translated by David John. This is a non-fiction memoir, biography, book about a woman's escape from North Korea. On a very different tone, Elvis in Vegas, How the King Reinvented the Las Vegas Show by Richard Zoglin. This is a non-fiction business history music book. Again, either going to be so fascinating and one of those like, whoa, I did not know I was interested in this topic, but now I'm hooked type books, or it's just going to be crappy. Then The Middle Scenes by Jamie Attenberg. This is a contemporary literary fiction type novel. I think it's a family type book. I read a chapter in a try a chapter video back in like I want to say 2020 or 2021 and at the time I wanted to keep reading it but I've never picked it up so I think I just need to like see if it's for me or not and if it's not that's fine. I don't need to read it. The Corset by Laura Purcell. This is a historical fiction and mystery novel. I think there's a woman imprisoned or something. Really excited about this. I've heard great things and I haven't read that much historical fiction in a while so I think it'll be really fun to give some a go. Uh, switching up to some essays, I have The Fran Lebowitz Reader by Fran Lebowitz. This is nonfiction essays and memoir. I have no idea who this woman is but like I hear her referenced a lot so I want to read her book and figure that out. More nonfiction, 1494, How a Family Feud in Medieval Spain Divided the World in Half by Stephen R. Brown. This is a nonfiction history and politics book. Sounds like exactly the sort of thing that I will enjoy reading before bed at some point, just having a like interesting but not exciting nonfiction book on the go is quite often my go-to way to fall asleep and I would like to see if that will be one of them. And finally, The Witches of New York by Amy McKay. This is a fiction, fantasy, historical fiction sort of book, I guess, about witches in New York. And like all of them on the list, I can't tell if I'll love it or really not enjoy it at all, but we will give it a go. And so that brings us to 21 books on my list. I could have added two more read it or reject books, but that felt like, ah, it's getting into a lot. So instead, I've rounded it out to 23 with sort of two standalones. One is one sequel. I want to read more sequels in 2023, to be clear, but there's one specific sequel that I want to make sure I read this year, and that is Amnesty by Lara Elena Donnelly. This is the third book in the Amberlo dossier, a mystery, thriller, political intrigue in a fantasy world, but not with magic series. When I read the first two books, and I think 2021 and 2022, I absolutely loved them. I really want to see how the whole th series wraps up because it's the final book. I want to see how everything gets resolved and where our characters end up, and I really want to make sure I make time for this book in 2023. And finally, I have a single French book that I want to try and make sure I read this year. I might read more, again, I'm not saying I won't, but I definitely for sure want to read Le Plongeur by Stéphane Larue. This is a contemporary fiction, literary sort of novel. 
set in Montreal in the early 2000s. I have a physical copy upstairs, which I forgot to bring down, and also I don't like holding up, but it's a big, chunky, like almost 600 page novel that I bought in French. It's supposedly very good. Last year in 2022, I read Le Comte de Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas, which is an absolutely massive French classic and really loved it. I had so much fun reading that. So this year I thought I would challenge myself to read one kind of chunky contemporary French novel and see how I get on with that. Historically, I find I have a lot more luck with French classics than I do contemporary novels. I think that's because most of my, like, well, training in reading in French was in school and in the program I did, we read a lot of classics and not that many contemporary novels. So I think I'm familiar with the language and the style and the way classics are written in French so I can enjoy the book more. Whereas with contemporary novels, I don't know the slang, I don't always feel like I'm getting the language as much. That can often leave me feeling like I'm kind of missing something. I have one distinct memory of a novel I read when I first started my channel where I could tell it was supposed to be funny, but I didn't get the jokes and I didn't know if it wasn't actually funny just trying to be or if I just didn't have the language skills to get them. But you can't get those skills without trying, so this year I'm going to read Le Plongeur and see how I get on with that and hopefully continue to improve little by little, very very slowly, my French novel reading skills. I'm not sure how I'm going to track my like results of this book challenge, this reading challenge, this TBR for myself, I don't know what we should call this, but whatever I decide to do, there will be videos coming sometime in the year, probably, about what I'm reading, how I'm getting on with these books, maybe I'll do vlogs for some of them. If there are any that you absolutely want me to review, let me know down below in the comments so I can make note to do a review video of those or something like that. Please also let me know in the comments if you're doing a challenge like this, how many books have you set for yourself? Is it something you do every year or is this a new thing? I'd love to talk about it down there. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you give me a like if you'd like to see more of my videos, including hopefully those sort of follow-ups on how I'm getting on with this. Make sure you hit subscribe and thank you for watching.